Seriously, Sean, alive. Oh, YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Okay. Well, I guess we're... I guess this is live then. I was not expecting that. Uh, there you go. Good evening, everybody. A couple little things to set up here and I'll get started. All right. I'll just wait a moment or two because it's just now seven. And rather than have a bunch of dead air, I will just start blabbering on um the challenge for big daddy linux is ongoing for regolith and last week we had a bunch of people give some feedback and um not all of it was positive but for the most part i think the people that that gave it a try and actually uh you know, sort of gave themselves a little bit of time with i3 to really kind of see what it was all about. I, I think some of those people may have may have experienced something they hadn't before, and so that was... Uh, I have two streams going? Of course I do. <laughs> oh, YouTube. You are the best. <clears throat> All right, let me, I don't even know how to, how, oh, how is this live? Hey, Explore. How's it going, man? Just having fun with YouTube here. Why it decided it was going to start my stream for Friday now? No idea. Okay, I'm down to one stream now. That's good. <laughs> hey, Mitchell. How you doing? Oh my goodness. All right. Finally. Yeesh. Nothing like starting out a stream that way, like every single time. One of these days it will just work the way it's supposed to. I, mean, I don't know if you've any, any of you have ever used YouTube to do this, but they have their streaming dashboard. It does say beta, so maybe I should stop doing that. But you go in there, you set up the stream, you get the key, Put it into OBS, and then you start streaming OBS, and it's supposed to show you a preview so that you can test your settings and look at it and make sure it works okay. 
and that's what I was trying to do. And it wasn't showing me the screen. So I stopped streaming, refreshed the screen, refreshed my browser, and somehow it started the Friday stream. And then this stream too. So yeah. They'll get this uh, YouTube thing right one of these days. But uh, anyway. All right. So what I was going to look at tonight was some more around i3. And I know we may have heard all we've ever wanted to hear about i3, uh, at least from the Big Daddy Linux perspective. But uh, I've been enjoying it. And I think what's interesting about it is because it's such a such a bare thing to begin with, right? I mean, it's it is literally... You know, a blank screen, a bar, and some keyboard shortcuts. So that's actually kind of an interesting starting point, right? And then from there, I started thinking, well, what have other people done with it? Because the whole premise of regular. Okay. What, the one I Anyway, so the whole point of Regolith was that it was a packaged uh, release with i3, and that they have that you know Ken, who was on the stream last week, his reasoning behind creating it, the fact that he was able to remap all the keyboard shortcuts and change the themes and do all the things he did, is what makes it interesting. And so then I thought, well, you know, there are other distributions out there that are providing their own default experiences and what do those look like in comparison to something like Regolith. Um, so that's really what I wanted to do was just take a look at the out of the box experience of I had initially thought Archbang, Arch Labs and Manjaro, but Arch Bang would not install for me. And it, it is a beta right now, I believe. The, the, at least the, the ISO that I downloaded said it was a beta. And it went through the install. It said it installed Grub. Um, and it would just it just wouldn't boot. And so I went back in and I reinstalled it because I thought maybe I did something wrong. And same result. And then I went back in and manually I true in and manually did the uh, the grub loader and that Still didn't fix it. So, you know, I, I gave it a good close to an hour of trying to get it working. And I just thought, this is, there's a, this is a sign. Let's just move on. So then I went and looked at Arch Labs and got it all installed. And I'll show you that. And it's pretty interesting. So it's, it's very dark, uh, minimal. But they've got a, a, a lot of things built in, which is really interesting. And uh, Arch Labs comes with OpenBox as the default session. But then you can switch to i3 and have, and they're very similar. I'll actually show both of them just so you can see them. But OpenBox would be more of a mouse driven uh, window, you know, not tiling window, but window manager. And um, finally, I wanted to look at Manjaro. And I've already shown it a little bit, but I just wanted to show it, actually show it, because I, I just brought it up to, as a comparison a couple weeks ago um, or last week. And so I just wanted to take a, Take a minute and so just sort of compare them um but let's check in on chat and say hi to everybody hey lamer how are you doing tonight i am doing fantastic i was out and traveling yesterday and was staying in a hotel and i really thought i could stream last night maybe as a, as a way to pass the time and just i hadn't streamed in a while but the wi-fi was so pathetic and slow that I literally couldn't even stream like video to watch like YouTube and stuff. That's how bad it was. I was on Discord and it kept disconnecting on me. So cheap hotel Wi-Fi strikes again. And I got back today and I thought, you know, I just want to stream something and uh, really have been again digging into i3 and just playing around with it. And I thought, let's Let's give this last week of the Biddle Challenge a, a, a little midweek kickoff and and uh, see where we end up on Saturday. So, uh oh, Rocco's here. Everybody behave. How's it going, Rocco? Hey, Ivan. How are you? All 
All right. So just figured we'll take a look real quick at so you know we've we if you haven't tested Regolith, we do have another week of it uh coming up on Biddle on Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um and if you haven't looked at it, it's definitely worth looking at just so you can at least um get an impression of what it is and um give some feedback if you can if it's if you're interested in that i think that's it's that's a it's an interesting thing we can do to help as a community when we do this testing especially if the developer is willing to be there and so i thought it was great to have ken there last week and if he can make it again this week and we can give him some more feedback you know all the better so that would be that would be fantastic but again the point of this was to just look at the other uh, distributions out there and this isn't all of them but this these are sort of the ones that you would find if you were looking specifically for an i3 desktop so uh, arch labs i have not looked at for a while and someone actually mentioned on one of my youtube comments that i should take a look at uh, bunsen labs um, arch labs which is it's so arch labs is inspired by bunsen labs um, so it's not Bunsen Labs proper, but it has that, it's sort of that same feel to it. And it's arch based, which is great. And um, I was really impressed by the initial experience and the installer was really neat. It was a command line installer, but it uh, reminded me a little bit of ArchFi where it sort of takes you through the steps that you need to go through to install it. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it it looks like something I would definitely give a, a solid chance. Um, I only played around with it a little bit, and then I'll, I'll show it to you here in a, in a minute. And then I'm going to look at Manjaro as well. And Manjaro has the benefit of having been developed for many years now. I think the i3 release has been out for, I mean, I honestly, I would say like at least three, four years. Uh, maybe that's a stretch, but I, I would say it's probably been about that long. And um, so it has the benefit of having gone through many, many releases, you know, many updates, many changes, a lot of feedback from the end users. The developers themselves have made changes. And I re remember it being less polished early on. But every time I've tried it in the last year or so, it's been very solid. So. Um, both of these do some interesting things with window placement. Uh, you'll see in Arch Labs in particular, they, the way they have their desktops laid out and actually have icons associated with them in the, uh, in the, the bar, uh, it, it's really kind of slick. And then when you open certain windows, they know to open as floating windows uh, or on a particular workspace. And Manjaro does some of those same things. So again, back to the premise of i3 is what you make it. You start with something very, very bare bones, functional um, for the tiling aspect, but not a lot of the creature comforts of a modern desktop environment. And that's where I think Arch Labs and Manjaro and Regolith to an extent, and certainly probably more so in the future, meet sort of meet that need that somewhere in between those two things where it's uh, instead of a full blown graphical desktop or a floating window manager, and a completely stark bare bones i3 experience you kind of get a little bit of the best of both of those things so lamer says that sudo reboot is using manjaro i3 and he loves it yeah i've, I've heard sudo talk about that and um yeah it's it is, it's a really well done package and Manjaro themselves do a really good job of maintaining, you know, their, their distribution. And so I could imagine running I3, which you're not going to have a lot of those dependencies of the heavier graphic desktops. So I would assume there are going to be less issues, but maybe that's just a, that may not be true at all. But I, I know there are a lot of people that use it and really enjoy it. And if someone were to say to me, what you know what would you recommend if i wanted to try i3 but not have it be so bare bones uh, i would definitely say mandro is a pretty safe bet 
Um, both of these are based on Arch, though. So if you wanted something man, uh, Ubuntu based, that's where Regolith, I think, could have a really strong position by basing off of Ubuntu versus Arch. And I wouldn't say necessarily stability being a stronger point, but just the avail availability of packages on Ubuntu. Um, so, yeah. Hey, Vince. How's it going? Good to see you. You think the color is inverted? On screen... Sh oh, is it? You are right, sir. Yes, I don't know why the default isn't that it swaps red and blue. But... You're absolutely right. My preview was too small to see that. Thank you. All right, so let's fire up. We'll look at uh, Arch Labs first. Well, that's good. We'll jump back to chat. Yeah, good to see you, Vince. You know, I knew this was going to be, what is it about? It's quarter after nine in the morning. I, I think I checked that's what, what the time was going to be. So I wasn't sure if you'd poke your head in or not. So All right. So here we have a very nice light DM login screen. And... Um, like I said, you have the choice. So the default is open box, uh, which I'll just go ahead and show that first. Uh, and you're going to notice a lot of similarities. So the, the difference here is that you have your right click open box menu, which you can get to, you know, your different applications and things are going to open as floating windows. because uh, Openbox is a, is a floating window manager. Uh, now it can act like a tiling manager. And funny enough, um, if I, so when I open terminal by right clicking from the desktop, it opened as a floating window. And I believe if I open it using the i3 uh, meta enter, no, okay, I wasn't sure if it was gonna, treat it like a tiling manager or not. I didn't spend much time in here. I, I thought I had read that, but anyway, so, um, so open box is very lightweight and this, this might be, so if you didn't like I three, maybe this is something that would be more, uh, still very lightweight, very utilitarian, but also, uh, more mouse friendly and, and floating window friendly. But, um, <clears throat> anyway, I, I just wanted to get you to see the kind of look and feel of this. And, and what's interesting is when we go, into i3 now they've really carried that over right and so you'd think oh this this is open box but it's not it's you know we're in i3 here so if i start using my keyboard shortcuts and things like that you know i'm going to get um get my normal i3 behavior now they have done some customization well no they've done quite a lot of customization but they've left the i3 defaults pretty much intact um, they've done some interesting things by having both the primary mod and and the secondary mod key active so for things like i noticed this right away when you're resizing windows in default i3 you're hitting meta r or mod r and here that doesn't work because what they expect you to do is to use the alt the mod two key and the arrow keys. So it's the alt key in this case, and I'm holding down alt and just hitting the arrow keys, which is, which is pretty cool because then you don't have to do that re resize toggle because in I3, the way it works is you do the mod R and then you resize the window. When you're done, you have to remember to hit escape to get out of that mode. So you're essentially toggling a mode on. Whereas here, it's just on the fly, and I can resize it at will. And it's by default, it's set to bump at 10, picks, at 10 pixels at a time. And, uh, but you can, you can change that. 
So let me look at the config file here, and I will make this much bigger. You can see it. Okay. So one of the things right away that I like about this is that they've done a great job commenting the file. And so as you go down through here, it's telling you it's got, first of all, it's got variables, which are great. So if I want to change colors, I can change a variable and that's going to be carried down through the theme in different places. Um, I can set my initial gaps. If you notice when I open more than one window, I've got these pretty sizable gaps. And if you didn't like it to be that way, it's going to be that way by default every time you open multiple windows. If you didn't like that, you could come back here and actually just set those gaps. And also note that there's an inner and an outer gap. So basically the difference between margin and padding, if you know anything about like how web elements are laid out and the, the outer would be sort of more of a margin and the inner would be more of like the padding. Um, so anyways, you go down through here, it's really nice because they have it set here for you already. So if you don't want super as the mod key, you can set it as alt. And it's just simply by uncommenting and commenting. Um, <clears throat> So they've obviously taken a lot of time here to really look through this and, and put care into it so that someone like me could come in here and easily see exactly what all of this is and where to change it. The other thing I mentioned was these window workspace icons. And so they just put the, the uh, I guess it would be the Unicode font uh, in here, pasted it, they probably copied it and then pasted it into this document. Um, the symbol itself and so you notice up on the top here the first one has this little home icon the second one because it has the chrome icon you would assume that's going to be where your browser is going to be third one's your files images video games editor and then i would guess that's probably um, compiling code or something like that or git and so they've sort of made some decisions for you here but you could change those and then another thing is as you come down through here, you can see, let's see if I can find the browser where it's telling you which desktop it's actually going to open on. And so we've talked about some of these more advanced options where you can actually say, open this, you know, here's this keyboard shortcut is for this application. And when this application opens, send it to this workspace. And uh, so they've done a lot of that here. And if I do the meta B, I thought it was meta B. No, it's uh, meta W. I'm already on this workspace. If I do meta F for file, you may not have noticed, but so I had been on workspace two. What it did was it opened Thunar and brought me over to uh, workspace three automatically. And so now you know if you if you have that in your mind you know that every time you open the file manager of thunar it's going to open it on that workspace you can even see a little icon there as a visual reference so that you know that three is that workspace so again you're seeing here sort of a level of refinement where someone has taken a very simple desktop like i3 and turned it into something much more elegant much more well thought out and uh, very, very usable right out of the box. Let's check back on the chat. I wonder if the color was bad on this as well. No, that one's already swapped. All right. Oh no. So Vince says the only problem using alt and left right now is that it stops you from using that shortcut in other programs. Fair point. Yeah, I could see that. And again, that's where someone's making a decision for you. I mean, that was the feedback for Ken, uh, I, you know, with Regolith on the on the stream where it was basically like, 
you know, you have decided to make changes to things that people are really used to already using in a certain way. And so that's going to potentially be a problem for those people. Now, the answer is, his answer was a typical sort of developer answer, which is, well, you just go change that, right? I mean, it's, you can just change it to whatever you want. And so it's not a big deal. And that is true. Um, but, you know, I will also say that you're right, Vince, that it, um, if you cause those conflicts knowingly, you can, you know, turn people off from, from using something. Um, so let's look at a couple more things maybe in Arch Labs. So they have a nice menu feature where it, uh, What is the key combo? I'm just going to actually pull up their site here. Okay, so for some reason it wants to open web on the desk on the first screen instead of the second one, which is interesting. And I'm going to send that off to the second screen. So they've got an, here's the list that they've got quite a number of applications installed by default. And they're all pretty lightweight applications and a lot of them have to deal with just configuration or supporting the base system itself. <clears throat> so it's not, it's not a lot, right? It's, it is a pretty, compared to most major distributions, that's a pretty lightweight just uh, install. Uh, the menu I was looking for. Oh, just come back here and look. So the menu I was looking for is Sorry guys, I, this was, uh, I just saw this not long ago, so I'm not sure what, where it went to. Let's see. There it is, Mod X. No, Mod X is the, yeah, that's the lock screen. Oh, control space that's what it is sorry um so so control space brings up a nice themed d run menu here uh themed in the sense that it's it's a box in the middle and uh you've got all of your access to all of your applications through that launcher and so i was playing with so ranger is an excellent file browser so you've got thunar that you could use but if you wanted something more like a midnight commander type experience, you could do Ranger, which gives you just this really nice sort of triple pane uh, viewing experience. And what I found interesting is it actually will take you into, if I, write, if I use my right arrow, it's just gonna drop me straight into Vim. And then I could uh, come in here and actually make the changes I wanna make and stay within the browser itself and so this i could see this being very useful i hadn't had a chance to really test out ranger i'd heard of it hadn't had an opportunity to look at it but i can see why people have recommended it 
very, very interesting tool. And you can do things like move files and copy files and do all of that sort of stuff in here as well. Uh, but yeah, very, very handy tool. Uh, let's see. And of course, one of the other things, so you have all of these gaps. Let me open another file manager here. So you've got the, the gaps between the windows, which again, seem a little extreme, but if you want to, you can pretty easily uh, change the gaps. So I'm holding mod key and then minus and plus will increase and decrease. And if you hit shift plus and minus, that's the, that will be the inner padding. So if I were to just do this, I could get no gaps whatsoever. And all I did there was mod, my, uh, mod and minus and mod shift minus. If I do mod shift plus, that's going to give me five back. And then so this is sort of the default. I think the gaps work a little bit better. So in regolith, you see that they have a lighter background. And I think that works a little better behind the gaps because it, it shines, it sort of shows through and, and visually it then very much separates. Now they did do a good job here of putting a pretty noticeable border on the active window. And I really like that. That's a nice touch in terms of being able to see just visual, quickly visually seeing what's active and what isn't. Um, so yeah, I have to say, I'm, I, I have not spent any time with Arch Labs before. I think I might have looked at it once a while ago, and I just, at the time, I wasn't interested in tiling window managers, I guess. And so... I wasn't seeing the ref I wasn't seeing it right. I wasn't seeing the refinement because I was looking at it from the perspective of almost like most of the people in in Biddle have been doing, where it's sort of like I use Plasma or GNOME or Mate or whatever it is I'm using, and then I see something that's so different and so stark that it doesn't register to you know what it what is this that I'm looking at and. Um, and I think that was probably the, the position I was in when I first looked at this was that I just didn't recognize the amount of effort and uh, attention to detail that went into this. I mean, you know, we've got functional, uh, clickable, you know, menus in the tray or volume, uh, updates, you know, CPU. I mean, they've put a lot of attention into this. And it really does show, and again, particularly, so the benchmarks I'm using to compare this, not just regolith, but if you do the default Arch meta uh, package install for i3, it does give you, an, you know, a workable R or i3 environment, but it is very Spartan. You know, no wallpaper, no nothing. You do get a bar. And you get all the shortcuts, and they don't even install D menu, so uh, they they bind it, but it's not there, and uh, so you have to know to to take it further than that to build it up. And I have actually gone through building up an i3 system from scratch, like installing it all, and then you know doing my own configuration, uh, setting up wallpapers with. It's F E H. I don't know if it's Fe or however, however you say that. Um, setting up my, you know, the the bar, you know, uh, setting up the config for the bar so that it's pulling out all of the values and then you know laying them out properly, key bindings, uh, theming, all of it. And you know, it takes a while, but I think once you get it to where you're happy with it, it stays that way, and then it's a known, known entity. And I. You know, I was watching uh, Derek's interview with Rocco on Linux Spotlight, and they were talking about he keeps all of his dot files out on GitLab because if he were to re-roll his desktop for whatever reason, for him to get back up and running to where he is right now, he simply just would have to get the base system installed with the window manager, and then he can import all of those dot files and it's like nothing ever happened. You know, it just is right back. So, um, 
So it does take time. And so now, having looked at this again at Arch Labs, and then also, you know, when I jump into Manjaro here, you start to see like there's a tremendous amount of effort that goes into this, even though it's seemingly so stark and, and lightweight. All right, let's see what's happening over here. I hadn't seen earlier, Lamer, that you said that Zeb had that same color issue. Yeah, I don't know. When you add a uh, a source, a window source, it there is an option that says invert blue and I think it's blue and red. And um, I'm curious now. Yeah, the option is swap red and blue, and it's unchecked by default. And in, in every case I've ever seen where it's unchecked, it doesn't work properly. So I've always had to set it every single time, and I, I don't understand why that's the default. It, maybe it's something I'm doing. I'm not entirely sure. Hey, Tim Jones, how are you today, sir? Finally made it to one of my streams. Well, this is probably only like my fifth one, so you don't feel bad. It's not like you've had uh, a thousand and you just keep missing them. You know, this this is this is early days for me in, in streaming. You're not you're not missing out. Um, I got one. Got a stream coming up Friday with Surge. We're gonna do part two of of uh, Slackware, looking at specifically at package management, which should be interesting because I've heard some feedback recently from folks that have said you know oh you know slack is actually pretty interesting and if, if you watch the first stream i did it really wasn't that hard to install they have some pretty good tools for getting it installed it the but the package management definitely seemed like something that was going to be a challenge so i'm very curious to see how that pans out um i'm sure serge is going to get me through it either way so steve made it hey steve how are you tonight I do not know. I mean, I guess it's a skill. I don't know how streamers can read and do the thing they're supposed to be doing at the same time. That's why I keep switching back and forth. I hope that's not annoying, but, uh, Hey, chicken. Good to see you, man. And Mr. Nate, how are you tonight, sir? Am I safe from the hurricane, Steve? Well, <clears throat> they're saying now it's supposed to be a Category 3, and the most southerly projection still puts us on the other side of the, the worst part of the storm. So if it, even if it were to come where they're projecting it at that worst possible, for me, worst possible path, we would be south uh, west of it. And so the, the, the northern, the uh, right front is what they say, so that the it would be, you know, the storm's right front as it's curling around. That's where the most of that damage comes in. And so unless it were to come, I'm on the west coast of Florida, so unless it were to come up the Gulf, that's really when it's a bad storm, which is why Irma was so scary a couple of years ago, because that looked like it was going to really uh, give us give us some trouble. And it did south of here, but not here. Um, but if this storm goes the way that it's going right now, we'll get a lot of rain. A lot of wind, uh, tree branches, stuff like that, but it won't be bad. Uh, the power companies, FPL, the Florida Power and Light, they are like meticulous about keeping trees trimmed back, and uh, they're pretty good about getting the power back on, and they're used to dealing with this. And so, you know, I, I think what I'm going to do is still book a, a hotel somewhere. And then, depending on the storm, I could always cancel the reservation. But last time this happened for Irma, 
we uh we left and i had to drive all the way to north carolina in one day in one evening actually uh until i could find a hotel room um we couldn't find anything and it so we drove for 10 hours before we could even find any hotel rooms uh it was it was pretty bad so in this case i think just to be on the safe side we've learned that lesson because we're never going to ride out a heart a big hurricane it's i don't i don't care enough about things i'm not going to put my family through that you know hiding in a closet or something and hoping the roof doesn't fly off like it's stupid if you have the means whatsoever don't ever Put yourself in that situation. Um, who else do we have kicking around here? Where am I from, Lamer? I'm in Sarasota, Florida. I'm from uh, just outside of Pittsburgh. I'm originally from Pennsylvania, but now I live in uh, Florida. In sunny Sarasota on the Gulf Coast of Florida. All right. So I think you kind of get the. <clears throat> I think you kind of get the idea of, of Arch Labs. There's a lot here. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm not doing it justice by giving it 30 minutes on a on a live stream. If you're anyone that wants to experience a, a, a nice refined i3 experience like it, you you it's hard to go wrong with something with either of these that I'm showing tonight but uh having not spent any time with arch labs before like I said I'm definitely going to come back and and poke around here a little bit more and see what's you know what else there is I will say one of the things I mentioned on the uh on the stream that I complimented regolith on was how well done the website was because there's so much information right it, it really helps you understand what are the you know what are the configurations what are the key bindings like why is it the way it is the motivations behind it all of that whereas uh, arch labs is a little more sort of standard for what you'd expect from a from a um i guess from a distros website so if I pull this back up. So, I mean, it's, they've got their news, they've got the gallery, they've got, you know, how to get it, what's changed. They do have a forum, which is great, but their docs are pretty, pretty lacking. Um, and again, this is good enough for, for probably for their audience, right? Cause you know, open box, I3, you know, you're not, you're probably not pulling in the, uh, the crowd that's going to need too much uh, upfront help, but I do like seeing the documentation so that it's a little, and, I, and I'll say the same thing, Manjaro is, is also like, this is it, right? You get this page and it doesn't really tell you anything about it other than it's a community edition, comes with i3 and i3 is a lightweight tiling manager. That's it. Uh, so, you know, there, but the the forum is actually pretty good. You know, Manjaro forum is active. It's very busy. There's lots of people there that that are helpful. There's a lot of things that have already been discussed, so that the information's there. It's just not as accessible and, and easy to use. Um, and being a web guy, I will continue to point out things like that because I think it's important that people, if you want me to care, <laughs> you want me to get behind you and uh, take you seriously. Like you got to have some amount of you know. Uh, I don't know. Refinement in your web stuff. All right. Let's jump out of Arch Labs and fire up Manjaro. Yeah, Robin, I will. I will definitely stay safe. I'm never going to make a decision that. You know, I need to be here. So if people have this irrational. I don't know. I, I feel like it's irrational because people feel this need to like protect their property or they they don't want to abandon, you know, or or they're, you know, they're not afraid or uh, 
I don't know. I'm not sure how to characterize it. I, I've, I will often ask people, because I'm not a native Floridian, I, I didn't grow up this way, uh, when a storm like this is coming is, should you, like, do you stay? Do you leave? And, and some people were just like, oh, we never leave. It's, and some people were like, well, no, we, we're not going to stay. I think it's kind of all over the place on how you feel, but there def definitely is a contingent of people that feel like they have to stay. Um, and there are certainly situations where people can't leave. Either they're elderly or immobile or disabled or whatever. Uh, they can't afford to leave. You know, th there's it's not everybody can has reliable transportation. Um, so inevitably, some people are going to be here for the storm. But if you don't have to be, if you're just staying because you want to make sure your house is OK, it's just a house. You know, you've got insurance. It's not worth potentially harming your family or, you know, and I'm, I'm just, as Rocco, you know, we'll, we'll tell you, you know, being a, a fireman, like people, you know, they, you have an irrational attachment to your things, but at the end of the day, no matter what happens, like it's all about your own safety and the safety of your family. Like things can be replaced always. So, um, Sorry, I'm just reading through chat again. Uh, let's see. You were there for nearly a month. Joe says you were there for nearly a month. Would have tried to get together. If I'd known. Oh, you were. Oh, you were here. Oh, I didn't know that, Joe. Um. Yeah. Well, I'm here still. <laughs> if you happen to uh, come back this way. Uh, I didn't realize you were going to be in this area, so. Um, yeah, Shikin, you know, the timing on these are, is really tough for me because I feel like I've got, um, you know, 7.30 Eastern time is a, hopefully people are done with dinner by then and like settling down for the evening on the east coast and then you sort of got to work backward and like people in the in on the west coast that's only 5 30 or 4 30 uh so it's even before dinner time and you know i know you're you're i don't know if you're all the way west coast maybe it's only like about maybe it's 5 30 for you but you know i'm, I'm th trying to keep that in mind and then that's that's also 12 30 you know in the uk so i'm not likely not going to get anybody there and then for like vince it's nine you know nine thirty in the morning uh so it's kind of it's kind of odd to try to i'm trying to find times that work f for everybody which i know just isn't isn't possible like i'm doing the stream on friday with surge at two in the afternoon eastern so i think a lot of but it's a friday so people are going to be working but it'll be after hours in the uk and in europe um it, it, there's just no way to, to to i guess do it for everybody but I have actually thought I would like to do daytime streams because I have time during the day. And I know that most Americans aren't going to be able to do that. But if I could, you know, stream for, for you know, my European friends and I, I, who knows, who knows? It's just difficult to try to fit it all for everybody. So, um, yeah. Rocco says there's no perfect time. You make the stream and people will come. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Robin says Saturday afternoons work best for us here. You know, I've actually thought of doing that. So uh, I know Rocco's, you know, he's got the Europe edition once a month. But I was, was kind of thinking, like, if I did a Saturday, like, off Saturday, uh, that that would probably be an interesting thing because I could probably – still get some audience from you know the u.s and uh you know near these time zones because it's the weekend but then also be able to be available for saturday evening for for folks over there so uh, i may try that 
So, Joe, you were due to go down to Sarasota in mid-September, but a family emergency brought me down. Yeah. Unfortunately, brother, I know how that goes. It is it is what it is, so I'm sorry to hear that. And, uh, well, if you are ever in the area again, um, let me know. Love to at least grab a meal with you or something. That would be, that would be great. All right, so let's take a look at Manjaro here. And you're going to see again, uh, and I would say this is even more bare bones potentially than, uh, than Arch Labs was, but you're going to see again that there's obviously some care and attention here. You've got a you know, nicely branded system wallpaper. You've got a conky uh, widget here that's showing you your CPU usage and RAM and system, you know, system stuff, your kernel. Uh, you've got a little overlay that's showing you some of the keyboard shortcuts so that's a nice touch um and then your bar that's giving you again your clickable icons so you can actually interact with these and, and make changes and do things that you need to do and then you've got all of your standard normal uh i3 shortcuts and also they have gaps as well and so uh That's for you, Vince, because uh, I'm sure that's what your desktop looks like all the time. Um, so yeah, it, you know, here we go. Another system with uh, obviously lots of thought and attention, care, attention to detail and care put into it. And they've obviously got some customizations to the, the keyboard bindings and things like that. So theirs is mod control B for the B menu. It's very small. That's yes, my control B. And B menu is is their system settings option. That's that's how you get in, and you can actually change a lot of the system itself just through this uh, terminal based menu. So you know, if I want to get to the file manager, I can do that. Um, do any of the kind of configuration there. The normal uh, let's see, kill focus, which I already know, open terminal, we know, open browser, so mod F2 is their browser. Again, uh, i3, it's, it's all about the, uh, the dark themes, right? And have that stark, dark look and feel. Uh, I think maybe you lose credibility in the, in the tiling window manager world if you were to use a light theme. I'm I'm joking, of course. If you go on like Reddit Unix porn, you'll see all sorts of pretty amazing color combinations. But it does seem like there's a push towards the darker interface. Which I guess speaks to the user base of these systems as well, because it's gonna be sysadmins and developers and normally people like that. So that makes sense. Um So in this case, it doesn't look like they're mapping out different desktops. They haven't done the same level of configuration. Um, that, uh, that Arch Labs has. So I would say in that case, maybe Arch Labs is just a slightly little more refined. And uh, some of these key bindings are a little different. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to read that. It's just very small, even for me. Mod shift H. Oh, that's nice. Mod shift H brings up a little, I guess it's, this is a PDF, which is a nice little primer. What are the most important shortcuts? Bring the fit. No. With. There we go. Okay, so these are the standard shortcuts that you would expect to see. Mod D, Mod Z. 
Uh, vertically, horizontally, float, full screen, sticky. Yeah, so this is this is all just i3 goodness. And here's here's where they start to bring in some of their things. So B menu, which I showed you, uh, pulling up the web browser, Pale Moon. Keep the dream alive, folks. Pale Moon. Uh, file manager. So they're using PC Man FM. So if I do mod three, I, my guess is it's just going to open on the same desktop. But this is a full screen window, so that's why you're not seeing it right now. Yeah. So I switch out of full screen and it comes back. And so let me just throw this on a different desktop. Where did it go? There we go. I think it's opening these as windows. Let me see. Yeah, that's exactly what it's doing. So it it's bound that. So let's, we can actually go back and look in the config. Um, my guess is it's in config. I3, it seems to be where everybody puts it. No? But if I went back to that help thing, it would tell me. So control shift H. And dun, 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 dun. I Oh, it's in i3, not in config i3. I didn't see that. Yeah, once this help is up, it's just on, it's on top and it does not get out of your way. Okay. i3 config. <clears throat> and I know this is pretty small, so I'm going to just try to make this a little bit bigger for a minute. Nope, that's not going to work. Well, let's look and see. Want use for titles. I'm going to figure out how to make that terminal font bigger. Yeah, Ivan, that is pretty cool to have that right on the conky. It's it was a smart idea, whoever thought of that. Uh, well, you know what? I could see this see this leading me down a rabbit hole, and I've already got about an hour under under the stream, so I'm not gonna. <clears throat> I'm not going to spend time on it right now because I just don't want to bore you guys with that. Um, so what I was looking for was this is PC Man FM, and I just want to see how that's launching in here. And so look for PC Man. Okay, so they've also done a good job here of commenting out, they're commenting their config file where they're showing 
possibilities of how to assign things. So in this case, if we always wanted it to be on workspace three, uh, I could assign that and then have that. And now when I reload the config, so let's save this and it should be mod shift C. And now if I were to go back to here and close these three, move that to five. And even from here, if I were to do <clears throat> mod F3, yeah, so you see it, it took me to death to the works third workspace whenever it launched because that was further down in the config file. So, <clears throat> so that's nice. I mean, it's nice that they took the time to show some examples of how to do it because that makes sense that you would then be able to just come in here and change things around like that. Um, yeah, pale moon on two. Sure. I like that. And I'm not going to use Thunderbird, so I'm not worried about that. And you see what I did here. Again, if you're not using i3, the beauty of this is that you make a change to this file. I'm going to write it out. And then mod shift C reloads my config. And it's just pulling in whatever changes I made here. And now it's going to behave in that way. So if I open up Pale Moon, which is mod F3. I'm sorry, mod F2. You see, it took me to desktop, to workspace to launch Pale Moon, and this is kind of what I was getting into uh, either my last stream or talking on Biddle about. And I think Derek mentioned this too in his video uh, in the Linux Spotlight. You know, he when you set it, you, you set the expectation that when you open something, it's going to be in a certain place. Now, Derek mentioned specifically streaming and how he'll have it set so that his windows are certain sizes and things like that. And uh, yet again, like a use case where you could see having a tiling window manager taking place, taking charge of these things, you're sort of telling it, do these, open these windows in this way, in this place, on this workspace. And it just does that consistently. So uh, compare that to something like most floating window managers, some of them, will remember window position. So if I always like to have a small file, you know, manager window open in the top right, like I have a very specific layout that I do on my desktop. I have the browser as, as the sort of top left and biggest window. And then I'll have like a telegram or a social window off to the bottom right. And so I'm sort of, you know, spreading those things out. And they, even if they're on top of each other, because it's a floating window manager, I always expect them to be in that place because that's just where my, you know, where I put them. And so if you sort of drag, if you extrapolate that out a little further and say, well, instead of dealing with the overlapping and the floating, you just say everything kind of gets its space and I already like it being there anyway, so I'm going to save it that way. There's actually ways to, to save your session where it'll save the windows and things like that, and then you can re kind of like replay it. Uh, so that's an option as well when you, if you get things laid out exactly the way you want, there, you, there's a way to export that and to save it as a configuration and then apply that whenever you're logging in, uh, you know, creating a new session. So what's happening over in chat? Hey, Dan, how are you? Didn't see you sneak in there. Steve's back. Where'd you go, Steve? Oh, you went to get your boy. Okay. Uh, see, hardly missed. Oh, we always miss you, Steve. Um, let's see. Love the distro information right here on Mandro, Mandro's Chrome. Oh, yeah. I just already said that, Ivan. Yeah. Um, Take it easy, Lamer. And so we'll poke around in Mandrora for a couple more minutes, but I think that's really what I was aiming to get at this evening was to just show the difference. Um, 
you know, again, back to the premise that it's easy to dismiss I3 as being just very simplistic or lacking features that in comparison or things like that. Um, and I, I think hopefully by showing these distributions in particular, you see that there's a certain level of refinement there where care and attention has gone into it to make it very usable, to give you the kind of tools you need to use a modern computer. Uh, you know, you've got your tray and creature comforts of configuration menus and things like that. So it's not all driven just by the config file. Obviously that's very important. And that is where the, the majority of the core settings live, but you can extend on top of that and uh, make something much more refined and elegant. And the other thing is too, so people, you know, the complaint of, well, it's just taking up the whole space and there's no way to sort of pop it out or, you know, or this window doesn't look right because it's being squeezed into a space where it's supposed to be a certain shape. And, you know, you always have the option of floating things. So, um, you know, if I open different terminals, you know, I, I can actually tell one of them, I want you to be either a full screen or I want you to float. I'll do it here on the, on the file managers. You know, I, if I meta F, that's full screen, meta shift F, or no, what is it? Meta, what was their float? Let's look back in here. Yes, please. Uh, sorry, I was distracted. Um, let's see. Mod shift space. Thought I was doing that. Um, shift space. Oh, there we go. Wasn't doing it right. Uh, so anyway, so you can see mod shift space. I was doing mod shift F, which is the, was the wrong thing to do. Um, now these are borderless windows, so that's kind of silly. But if I go back here to the file manager, uh, you can see it will either take up the full screen. I guess this is a, maybe they don't treat it the same way. So when I was on uh, Arch, it wasn't making it full screen. So. Um, My point being, there are ways to use the system where you can have a floating window, uh, have a, an application that's not going to work right as a tiled window, still show up as a floating window. If you notice, whenever I logged in, uh, let's close everything out and just actually exit out of here. When I logged in, it shows, oh, I didn't have the, I. The welcome screen, which isn't going to come up, uh, came up as a floating window. So what it's obviously you can map that in there. You've, you saw that on Arch Labs. So um, anyway, all right, let's uh, take one more look at the chat. And I think that's going to be it for me this evening. Rocco says, what's my opinion of the three? Uh, I have to tell you, so I, I had been leaning towards uh, Manjaro, but having looked at Arch Labs, and, and I've had other people tell me, like, you should really look at Arch Labs because I think you'd like it, and I th they're right. Um, I'm going to spend a little more time before the stream this Saturday. And I think that's probably what I'll contribute this week is just that I spent a little more time with different i3 distributions. Um, certainly not to knock on Regolith. I gave my feedback and I think, you know, we're, we're all being polite and honest at the same time, which is fine. And, uh, you know, 
I think my honest opinion at this point is that Regolith shows the potential to be something, uh, but also recognize that it's very much a passion project for one individual who's happy with the things that he's put together. And I really don't expect that person to make a lot of changes because that they're already kind of doing what they want to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, why, why would he, so if we found flaws and certainly if we have feedback, I'm sure he's going to take that and internalize it. But at the end of the day, it's a personal project for him and it has to make sense for him to want to make those changes. And I don't expect him to listen to me as a random user who's probably not even going to use it on a full-time basis anyway, like he's going to, to make those changes for me. So I think there's a, there is potential and I think he'll keep making changes and refinements as, as he moves forward with it, continuing, con providing he continues to do that. But if, I, if someone today said to me, what do you consider to be a really like good option for a tiling window manager, I three desktop, uh, you know, it's, it's probably going to be between Mandro and Arch Labs. And, uh, and I didn't get a chance to test ArchBang because it wouldn't work for me. So there might be something there as well. But as of this very second, if I had to make a choice, I would say I'd probably spend want to spend more time with Arch Labs just to see what that's all about because it really looks like those guys did some pretty amazing things on there. And I also like that it has open box as well. So I think that if I, let's say I was I installed Arch Labs bare metal and for whatever reason I was trying to do something in a tiling environment and it just wasn't you know it just wasn't having it wasn't working having the fallback to to open box is is pretty interesting and the fact that it's so they're so seamlessly put together that literally it's hard to tell the difference between which one you're running um that's that's a lot of that's pretty impressive to me. And that's something I want to spend a little more time with. I've wanted to one look at open box anyway. And uh, so I think, I think this is my opportunity to maybe look at those things a little, a little more closely. So there's the three minute answer to a two second question. <clears throat> oh, it's control plus. Yeah. You know what I was doing that I haven't, and I, I'll try it again. Just, because I'm here, um, and I didn't didn't seem like it wanted to do that for me. So let's see. Hello, there we go. Control plus. Nope. I mean, I'm doing all the normal ones you would normally do. Control plus. Control shift plus. Um. So. Uh, sometimes you can uh, hold control and zoom the, the mouse wheel. Uh, so that's, I guess, just this terminal emulator doesn't do that. So, anyway. I'll, I'll figure it out because I want to come back and test it on my own, but I don't know. It, I'm still trying to feel out what, what I, how much of this is worth showing on a stream. I know you guys are here. You're having a good time in the chat and stuff like that, and and you're you're watching this. I just don't want to. I mean, so, sometimes I think it could be a little too much to just watch somebody sit here and, uh, you know. And I also tend to concentrate while I'm doing it, and so that I'm not talking. And yeah. All right. Well, you know what, guys? I really appreciate you coming out and checking this out. I hope you did give i3 a fair shake. If you haven't, and you haven't looked at Regolith, and you haven't given it a feedback on uh, on the stream, and you're going to be on Biddle this week, you know, just give it a couple minutes, and you know, maybe a few, maybe a little more than a couple minutes, but see see what you think of it, uh, the idea of it, and if you're just really frustrated with it, uh, you know, I understand. Or if, but if you use that and you're interested, so that, I mean, it sort of regular kind of kicked off my interest in looking at all of these different things. So it was uh, inspirational in that sense to at least get me, you know, thinking about these things. So anyway, 
Hope to uh, see you guys. I have that stream Friday, don't forget, at 2.15 Eastern U.S. time with Surge. And we're going to cover Slackware package management. So you'll be on the edge of your seats listening to a Frenchman tell me what to type on a keyboard. So uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. I learned so much on that last stream. And Surge is immensely pa patient with uh, goofy guys like me, so. <clears throat> All right, everybody, thank you for joining this evening. I really appreciate it. Take care, Rocco, Dan, Ivan, Tim, everyone else. Uh, I really appreciate it, like I said, and uh, I'll be back soon. And uh, pick it back up then. All right, guys, take it easy.